All right, so in this video, we're going to be dealing with the property that the limit as x approaches to 0 of the sine of the function sine x over x is going to be equal to 1. Now, this is very interesting because you might be thinking that this is not useful because we have only one case, right, sine x over x. But no, this, is actually can, this actually can be use, used for many different cases, and I'm going to be showing you a lot of examples to make sure that that makes sense. But let's look at some basic ones first. So if we had the limit as x approaches to 0 of 5 times sine x over x, let's say we had like something like this. This is actually just going to be equal to what? So we can think about it like this. Take this 5, move it out. Move it out. So this is just going to be what? 5 times the limit as x approaches to 0 of sine x by x. Now this is quite simple because we know that this thing is just equal to 1 because we know that from here. So this just equals 5 times 1, which is equal to 5. We can make this as a rule, just like a general rule. So limit as x approaches 0 of c times sine x over x is equal to c. c can be any real number. Okay. So that's that's just a basic basic example. So let's say we had something more complicated. So we had like the limit as x approaches to zero of sine of five x, right? Five x over five x. Turns out that this is also equal to one. So that means the function over here, this function here that's inside, it can be a function u of x. However, u of x cannot be any function of x because that's not going to work all the time. I'll show you examples in where it's not going to work, but it's going to work when we have terms and all of the terms of our function, we can have multiple terms, but all the terms of our function mu must have x in them. Okay, so this is, this is good because we have one term and that term has x, so it's going to work. That's equal to 1. If we have like limit as x approaches 0 of, say, sine of... 3x over 3x, right? This is also going to work. This is also equal to 1. So basically, if the limit as x approaches to 0 of sine of cx over cx, this is equal to this is equal to 1. Now, there's more to it, right? There's more to it than this. This is there's more to it. Let's Let's see. So remember I said that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of something, right, over some over that same something, this is equal to 1 whenever each term has x in it. So that means that we can broaden our broaden this this uh, a lot more. So if we had like something like x squared plus x, this would still be true. So we had something like limit as x approaches 0 of sine x squared plus 2x plus, I don't know, uh, let's make it x cubed plus 2x squared plus x or something, this would also be true. This is also equal to 1. When is this not going to be true, though? When is this not going to be true? This is actually not going to be true when we have our term not having x. So when we, whenever we have something like this, say we have something like sine of x squared plus 1. This is not true over x squared plus 1. This is actually not going to be equal to 1. And the reason why is because it's pretty it's pretty evident because we can do this. We don't even need this property here. We can just do this with the direct substitution property. This is just going to be equal to sine of 1 over 1, which is equal to just sine of 1, which is not equal to not equal to 1. So each term for our function u of x must have a um, must have a x in it. Each term must have x x's in it x, x's in them. That's very important. Okay, um, and that should make sense because why does that make sense? Well, if we look at the if we look at something like sine of x squared plus x, the zeros as they go in here, they're just going to become zero. So the whole thing is just going to become zero. But if we have something that's like x squared plus 1, it's not going to become 0. It's, it's going to become 1. And that's not going to work out to be equal to 1. 
So it must be that each and every term of u of x that's inside of the sine x uh, or inside of the sine, fun sine um, operator, sine function, must have x's in them. Let's look at a couple more examples where you have to rewrite the function. So it's not always going to be as laid out for you. It's not going to be that easy. Let's say that we had like something like the limit as x approaches to 0 of sine x. Let me make this sine sine of 2x raised over something like x, right? What would you do in this case? This is also relatively simple. I would just multiply in a 1 half. And then uh, to cancel that out, because we can't just multiply in a 1 half 2 without changing the value, I would multiply in a 2. So these two, this, these twos would cancel out. We don't change our value in any way. This would just be 2 times the limit. Let me do the 2 in, in blue. So 2 times the limit as x approaches to 0 of sine 2x by 2x, which is going to be equal to what? Well, 2 times, we can use the property here to get rid of this 2 times 1, which is going to be equal to 2. We can do more. So let's say that we had the limit as x approaches 0. Hmm, let's see. Let's say we had uh, something like 4 times sine of 2x squared divided by x squared. Um, actually, let me let me make this a little bit more complicated. Let me see. Let's say we had something. Let's say something like x squared. Actually, let's keep the x squared. Let's keep the x squared for now. Let's do this one first. I need to introduce another property after this. So, what is this going to be equal to? Well, we can we can do this by First, we can take the 4 out, or we can just multiply in a 1 half. Right? You can always just multiply in a 1 half here first. And then we can um, we can take the 4 outside. And we can't just multiply in a 1 half, so we have to multiply in a 2 as well to cancel that out. And then this, will, this 4 will go outside, multiplying with that thing. So this is all just going to be 8 times the limit as x approaches to 0. I'm not going to bother doing this in different colors. Sine 2x squared by 2x squared. This is equal to, let me double check that I made all my work. So at 1 half and 2, those cancel. So that's going to be accurate. And then we can bring the 4 outside. Yeah, this works. So this is just going to be equal to 8 times, this thing is just 1, we know that. So this is equal to 8. Now the second thing that I wanted to point out in this video, this is another thing, it's very closely related, is the fact, is the fact that the limit as x approaches to zero of something like x by sine x, this is also going to be equal to one. This is also going to be equal to one. This is very similar to this. And both of these are going to be true. So in the next video, we're actually going to be dealing with another property that has the limit as x approaches to infinity or negative infinity. So these of sine x over x. And we'll be, we're going to be seeing how this works out to be equal to zero. This is a topic for another video.